Lambdas have a bit of a reputation for being the thing that not a lot of people know what it is. It's very confusing and that's probably in no small part because of its name. Lambda is not an obvious name um, insofar as it doesn't really tell you what it does. Uh, Guido Van Rossum, or at least someone on the Python team, has actually gone on the record to say that naming this feature a Lambda was a terrible idea. So what exactly is a Lambda? What does it do? And how do you use it? Well, so Lambda, in short, is called an anonymous function. It is a function that doesn't require a name. So if I were to do def add x, y, return oops, x plus y, and then if I were to do lambda x, y, x plus y, uh, these two functions are completely identical. The main differences are that you use lambda instead of def. You don't need to supply a name, though you can do if you want to. And you also don't need to supply a return. Whatever's on the right-hand side of the colon is returned out of the function. If you wanted to give it a name, you could do something like add two equals and just define it the same as you would a variable. In order to prove to you that they are in fact the same, I'm going to give this a name, so add two. And then we're going to do print add one, two. And then we're going to do print add two, one, two. And you'll see this add to doesn't appear as, you know, in the same color as a function. It's because it doesn't recognize this as a function. It recognizes it as a variable. But if you do run uh, our thing here, we can see that they've, uh, they work exactly the same. Uh, this coloring difference is just, you know, Visual Studio Code's linter. Don't be fooled by it. Um, but yeah, they work absolutely identically. So you may be wondering at this point, why you would ever want to define a function like this. You know, you have this fancy one line syntax using this lambda. Lambda is a very fancy word, coming across all very fancy. Well, there are problems with lambdas. Oh, I shouldn't say problems as such more, that lambdas weren't designed to perform the same tasks as normal functions. For example, lambdas are not multi-line. You can't even use semicolons within lambda expressions. There may be a workaround for that if you use brackets. I don't know, I haven't tested it. So you can only do single line operations. So any you know, function that needs multiple lines isn't going to work. There is a very specific use case for lambdas, and I'm going to show you what that is now. So say we had this list of animals. We have a dog, a cat, a bird, an alligator, and a shark. And say that we wanted to sort this list from smallest to largest by the length of each value. Now you could, in theory, uh, theorize that you do you know, sorted animals. You know, if you didn't know any better, you could theorize this. And then if we printed that, what we'd find is that it sorts them in alphabetical order because, oh uh, yeah, of course, if you were to sort a list of strings, your first guess would be to go alphabetically. So how would you do it using lengths? Well, the key, you see what I've j just done in a second, is to use the key Keyword argument. See, I've got there's so many keys in there, I can unlock several houses. So, <laughs> and this key takes a callable. So something you could do is you could do uh, you know, def get len of string and then return len string and then you could pass in get len in here. And every time, uh, or for every element in animals, uh, this get len function will be called the string, uh, the actual animal will be passed to this string argument and it will return the length of the string. And then, you know, we return a list three, three, four, five, six. You could add in extra logic to, you know, sort by length and sort alphabetically. We're not going to worry about that right now. But that is one way that you could sort the list by, um, you know, length. And some people have just learned something new already in this video, and that's great. But there is an easier and more efficient way to do that. And it's to get rid of this, we don't want this, and instead use a lambda. So what we can do is do lambda string len string. And now that does exactly the same thing. So because lambdas don't have to have a name, we can just define them right here in, you know, as a keyword argument. And this is where the use case of lambdas lies. Uh, there are a few other things as well. So say if you had a list of uh, numbers, 
actually, you know, say if we still had the list of animals and we wanted to return all of them that were three characters long, we could use a filter. I'm just going to call this F for now. And then we can do lambda x and then len x equals three. And then we can have animals. And then if we print the list of F, just so we kind of have a, a viewable representation, we can see that we've now filtered the list to only animals that have a length of three. So we're using this callable as something called a predicate. Um, <clears throat> and basically, if this function returns true for a particular element in the list, that element is then carried forward into our new filter object. Um, so stuff like this, you know, stuff like uh, the key in sorted and stuff like the predicate in the filter are the use cases for Lambda. There are plenty of other use cases as well. Um, you know, anywhere you need to pass a callable somewhere um, or a function, a lot of the time, unless you need a lot of logic within that function, it's going to be easier just to create a Lambda. So if you've got a single line thing that just, you know, needs to return a value and nothing else, Lambdas are great for this sort of thing to keep your code clean. Sure, the word Lambda isn't exactly the most intuitive, but once you know what it means, then you know what you're looking out for. Um, and hopefully, you've learned something new in this video. If you have, then make sure to like it to let me know, and maybe consider subscribing if you fancy learning some more stuff in the future. If you want to support this channel monetarily, you can do so in two ways. The first of which, by becoming a member. You can do that using the member or the join button below. Second of which, by becoming a Patreon or a patron. Sorry, not a Patreon. All my current members and patrons are on the screen right now. One pound a month and you can be on that screen too. And I'll see you in the next video for something else. I don't know what exactly. I've got a few ideas that I want to go through. Um, stuff like iter tools and, you know, uh, uh, threading versus multiprocessing. So, yeah, if you have any suggestions of what you want to see, then feel free to leave them in the comments below. But I'll see you next time when we do whatever.